I suck at jujitsu. How do I suck less? I guess to suck less. Hey everybody, this is Josh McKinney, and I just want to welcome you to the newest episode of the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show. An ode to Jiu-Jitsu competition. This is actually not the plan for this week. This week we were supposed to look at my five biggest uh, mistakes in my Jiu-Jitsu, and um, I actually have a really good episode planned for that. I just did not, um, you know, I'm competing this week to be honest, the week of recording this, and so that's what's on my mind, and... I just would rather do this episode today. And I think that people are gonna really like this one. We haven't been doing a ton of jujitsu competition stuff lately. And so uh, I'm really excited to get into this one. And I think that you guys are really gonna like this one. It is going to be fun because uh, everything that we are digging into is going to just be encouraging. It's just gonna be about that I think you should probably compete in jujitsu. And um, we're gonna also look at the caveats, look at the people that maybe shouldn't compete in jujitsu and maybe it's not as smart. Um, but uh, I'm just gonna kind of try to sell you guys on this one that you should be uh, at least testing yourself a little bit and um, trying to compete in jujitsu. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you. Let's go ahead and get into today's episode. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started on this episode. So um, big idea one is why why should you be competing in jujitsu? Why does it matter? Um, and does it matter for you? Does it make sense for you? Um, my biggest reason for my students to compete is actually not technical. It's not a jujitsu concept. Uh, it is simply because not many places can you just pay like, 80 to nowadays maybe $180, um, but uh, just pay 100 bucks to go get a chance to actually look fear in the face and try to conquer it. And um, also try to, to conquer yourself a, a little bit if you can conquer fear. And so um, the reason I say that is because the reason most people that want to compete at jujitsu, the reason that they don't compete in jujitsu, in my opinion, is fear. And, um, I know that that is offensive to people like, no, 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 that's not why the only reason I don't compete is dot, dot, dot. Right. And look, there are good reasons to not compete. Um, my dad doesn't compete. My dad's 62, right? He's a black belt. He's in great shape. He could compete. There are even divisions for him. Um, but the, the risk of him getting hurt, and this is something that even I push to him too, right? He would, if I was like, dad, I think you should compete. He would do it. Right. Um, so don't go telling him that. But anyway, uh, if I say that he would, he would want to compete, but uh, together we kind of both agree. It's not a good idea. It's pretty hard on your body. Right. And it's just, um, especially as you age, there is definitely risk of injury. Um, but I really don't see that that is the reason that most people don't compete. And most people in jujitsu, um, I assume if you maybe train somewhere that nobody ever does, and so you're just not around it. Um, but most people in jujitsu like the idea of competing in jujitsu. Um, it sounds like something fun. Maybe they even have this little mental picture, um, in the back of their head that, they are somebody that competes in jujitsu. And uh, I know a lot of people like that. And then I know a lot of people that were like that and then finally just took the step and started to train or started to compete. And um, that is kind of like the, the, the intro to this first story for you guys. I have a lot of stories for you. Um, last week, we just told my whole life story. Um, but this week, we just have a mix of different stories. Um, but uh, I think that this is a perfect example of this idea of paying $80 to conquer fear. This is an IBJJF tournament, so it was probably closer to, you know, $200 plus hotel and gas. Um, but regardless, 
it's still a great story. Um, so uh, how this goes, and this was actually told on the podcast once, but it was really early on in the studio, and is an episode I wasn't able to release because the sound quality was so bad. We didn't have the mics. I say we. I didn't have the mics set right. Um, I really just didn't know how to use it yet, and um, I just haven't. I haven't said that I won't post it because I've always hoped I've been able to fix the sound well enough. Um, but it's just, it hasn't been, hasn't been there. And, uh, um, so maybe we'll have to re-record this one, but, uh, uh, anyway, the story is like this. Um, this is a couple of years ago. We were at an IBGGF tournament and this one was special for me because, um, the guy that runs, my um, uh, the, my other gym, right? We have Headnod HQ and we have Headnod Training Center Jerseyville. Um, uh, my black belt, Logan, he um, has been on the podcast a bunch, but he does... Um, he decides he's going to compete at this one. And what's different about this one, he's a brown belt at the time, um, is he hasn't competed in a long time. And he really hasn't competed in a long time. Uh, of course, life is busy. There's all kinds of other reasons. But a big reason is the anxiety of it, right? Is the... Um, is the going out there and having to get in front of your friends and your family and perform your art uh, and you get one shot to do it. And there is this pressure on you when you go compete, even though there really isn't. You know, I've lost quote unquote big matches and the truth is nobody really cared. I have one annoying purple belt who's like 18 at my gym that always tries to bring up losses but he's an 18 year old annoying purple belt, you know, who cares, right? That's the only person that is going to bring up your losses is an 18 year old annoying purple belt, right? No one cares if you go out and you don't perform, but there is this fear that you're going to go out and especially as a, as a coach and Logan at this time was a coach, you're going to go out and you're other people's coach. What if you go as a brown belt, you just go get wrecked in your first match. And then your second match, you just go and just get destroyed. What are you going to do? Right? Are your students going to say, well, this guy doesn't know jujitsu. This guy sucks. No, I don't think they will. Um, but that's still the fear. I still fear it now as a competitor. And I know that that won't happen. But I still, like, there is this fear of embarrassment when you go out to jiu-jitsu competition. There's just all these other fears when you go out to jiu-jitsu competition. And um, I know it's a weird way to start an episode. Is like, yeah, it's really scary. But I think this story will help us, help us be a, a, a little a, a more understanding to why we started with fear. Um, but for Logan we knew that this was going to be a really, really hard day. We knew it was going to be a hard experience. He also had students of his competing at the tournament. Um, but we knew for him just the anxiety after years of not doing it was going to be real. But he wanted to not just compete. He He's like, dude, I see you traveling all the time and competing all the time. He's like, I want to be a competitor. Um, and he's like, I, I'm, I'm ready to do it. And uh, he's like, I'm not going not gonna to let fear hold me back. And it sounds silly, but um, the fear was just so big. And, and you know, he told this story on the podcast, even though you guys didn't hear it, but I will repeat it to you. There is this, like, uh, when we get to the tournament, he didn't compete till like 4 or 5 p.m. And we get there at 9 a.m. And you could just fear, feel the anxiety that he was struggling with um, to a point where multiple students, multiple of my coaches come up to me and said, hey, have you talked to Logan? Um, the funny thing is he and I had actually planned that like, hey, we know that this is going to be horrible. We know that this is going to suck and there's nothing we can do about that. All we can do is wait for the moment to come. And when the moment comes, just go compete. Deal with the fear. When the moment comes, just go compete. And we literally, I'm not exaggerating, he and I talked about this for months. Just, you know, don't ask me how I'm doing about it. You know, don't ask me how I feel about it. I feel terrible. I don't, you know, I don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to do it. And when the moment comes, I'm going to go just try my best. I'm going to go perform. And that was all it was. And that was the, that was the mindset. And we um, have dissected a million things on competition anxiety. Um, and this isn't really a, as much of a how-to episode. Um, but, you know, t typical stuff, um, breath work, mindset, uh, just trying to disassociate from the situation so 
you can go in and, and just perform. And, you know, this dude warmed up in the bullpen for like three hours with his headphones on just getting that anxiety out a little bit, right? And um, when it was time to perform, it was not the greatest draw. He draws somebody that, uh, full disclosure, me and Richie were going to coach one of my uh, brown belts. We're going to coach him in this match. And I'm like, Richie, how do you think this goes? And he's like, how do you think this goes? And I said, I just want this guy to perform. I just want him to go do it. Like, neither of us really, like, looking back, we had no intention that Logan was going to, like, it wasn't even about that. The anxiety was so big, we couldn't care less if this dude lost. We literally were in this point where we're just sitting there going, I just want him to perform. Like, I just, I've seen how, how hard this has been on him. And I just would hate for him to go through this and just not get to do any jujitsu. And that was kind of how we were talking. And then the match starts and Logan looks like himself as a, a person on the mat. And that is like huge. Most people, that's what you, when you lose in competition, especially early on, you're like, I didn't feel like I performed my jujitsu. And he went out and performed his jujitsu and he actually finished this guy that was one of the most experienced competitors at the entire tournament um, that Logan had to have first round. And then um, in his final, that was a semi, and then in his final, he uh, uh, passed the guy, mounted him, put pressure on him, I think passed him and mounted him again and won the match and won the entire tournament. And it was, uh, to me, looking back, one of the most fun moments uh, in competition ever for me, and I wasn't even competing. Uh, I was, you know, coach in that situation, but it was so crazy to see somebody that really did have this mountain of fear and just look it in the face for whatever reason and say, today, I'm done with this. I'm going to go compete, you know? And he had competed before, but... You know, do you think, do you assume that he had great experiences if he felt this way about competing? You know, he didn't. And so, as I just, as I look back on that story, I just think about like how big of a moment in my life that is. So, how big of a moment in Logan's life must that be? Right. Um, and so, uh, and I have the same types of moments in my life, right. And of, competing, maybe not to that level of fear, but just ha dealing with the fear of jujitsu competition and overcoming it and um, making it through. And I just, uh, I can't think of any other way I could have gotten to face those fears without competing, right? Um, I'm sure there are other things that make you face to face with fear, right? Um, but not many that are $80, Right. So that is, that is kind of why I, that's why I look at that. That's why I look at why people should compete if for a fear basis. You can look at just overcoming your fear. And that's important. That's something that uh, if people could do, it just kind of changes your life in other places. If you struggle as much as some people do with competition anxiety, as much as I did, I've told you guys this. I, for years, and it wasn't at first. I, for a long time, had none. I just would go and beat people down, and I was just a kid who trained a lot. And then when I started to put more pressure on myself, when the competition got higher, um, when I got to train less, I started losing more. And when I started losing more, my competition kind of went with it. And so, um, kind of as I look, as I as I look back on that, I'm like, man, that's really where that started. And I dealt with this performance anxiety and the inability to perform competition after competition. And uh, I couldn't pin it down. And it took, it took a long time, but we got to this place where I just go compete. If somebody beats me, most likely they're just better than me. You know, um, it wasn't that I wasn't myself. It wasn't that I didn't perform. Um, it is just that they were better. And that's really nice to know because then it makes it so much easier to go back to the drawing board and start to look at how can I fix this? How can I get better at jujitsu? And that takes me to big idea number two. It's because it just makes you better at jujitsu. Uh, I remember in 
man, this must have been 2010. I was 17 and I did a private lesson. Me and my dad actually talked, or we talked about this last week. Me and my dad would go and travel and do private lessons. He would get me out of school. And uh, we went and trained with Jack McVicker and he was talking to us about how, why he competes and why he still does it. And we're just kind of discussing that. And he says, well, you know, um, as a, uh, as a competitor, you'll tend to just be better. He goes, if you go to a gym and you pick out the five best guys, most of the time, those are the competitors at the gym. And it's not because they, you send out your five best guys to go compete. It's because those guys have to dedicate a little more. They have to focus a little more. They have to train a little harder and a little more consistently because just like we talked about it earlier, the fear of embarrassing yourself, the fear of sucking, right? And so um, one of the best ways, though, and we talked about this with Jared last week, one of the best ways to get good is to go out and lose if you have to, but you go out, right? Uh, and he was just, he was talking about that when he started out. We saw his first competition ever. It was against uh, one of the best guys in his weight class at the time, and he lost, and then it, he got a little better, and then he got a little better. But he was, like he said, he was losing. And he's like, and so many people will just quit because they can't handle losing. And uh, not only will that make your mindset suffer, um, but I'm telling you, this that that mindset of not uh, uh, of not competing out of fear of losing. And I know, like, look, I promise you guys, I hate losing. I promise you guys, as a grown man, I have cried because I've lost jujitsu competitions, okay? While you've listened to this podcast and had respect for me on a Thursday morning, that Saturday, I had cried real tears as a grown man because I lost a jujitsu competition. I hate losing, okay? Not a fan but I still will go out and lose if I have to because a lot of the time, willingness to lose today turns into wins tomorrow, okay? Willingness to go out there and compete. You don't need to have this cool persona. This is like, and I see it amongst uh, all of my peers. I see it amongst gym owners. I see it amongst content creators. I see it amongst anybody who has some quote unquote authority in jujitsu. They get so scared of people finding out that they're not as good as they portray themselves to be. And okay, who cares what people think? Because you're actually making yourself suffer. You would be getting better if you were following the routine of a competitor. You would be getting better if you were doing the training that competitors have to do. And uh, again, like I said, this caveat, some people physically just cannot do that, right? Their job or their age or their just their life makes that um, not a smart thing to do. But for most people, especially most people that just don't have anything to do, doing a jiu-jitsu competition, though it will consume your life, um, and trying to turn yourself into a competitor, I think is just so big. And I don't I don't know if it really turns you into this super confident person. I think for some people it does. Um, but I think the thing about jiu-jitsu competition is it is so humbling. It's crazy how humbling it is to not, even if you win, but to be that close and that exhausted, <laughs> that close to death because you're that exhausted, it is unbelievable. It is the greatest experience. Um, but sometimes you just go with somebody that is simply better than you. I remember when I grappled Yago Souza in 2020. This is like uh, this is like when things start to open up. We can compete in like Dallas and stuff like that. And I go compete against him and I got on bottom with him. And I remember coming home that Monday. No excuses. I actually could have made excuses, right? You always can. There's always something in your training. There's always something in your life that came up and you're like, oh, well, that's why I lost. But the truth is, 
you lost because the person was better at performing jujitsu that day. And that is very, that's a very important skill, right? Uh, uh, that's kind of the skill of competing. And his jujitsu was unbelievably good. And I remember coming back and not having any excuses and being like, oh my gosh, that was mind blowing how good this guy was. And I had competed at black belt for a while. I just never felt somebody that I thought was like that. And uh, I remember that Monday breaking down techniques with my uh, my brown belt Richie. We're like, okay, what are we gonna what are we gonna do differently because this dude's passing was different. And um, I remember talking to him and going, it felt like he was so close to me. And then as we talked more, it was like it felt like he was walking towards my hips. And then from there after months of dissecting and training and positional sparring and doing all the things we should, that is where the idea of chest over chest really came from. Um, which is like, for me, this is the, the, the thing that I teach every time I teach a seminar is what people want to learn. It's like, Oh, can you show chest over chest stuff? I'm like, Oh yeah, I, I, I would love to. Right. Uh, but that biggest idea, it came from one me losing, but then it also, it came from um, uh, not you win or you learn because you can easily lose and not learn, right? It's very easy to lose and go, oh, well, I was sick that day. My, my stomach hurt. I swam in a pool and the chlorine got in my eyes and, you know, I just was having trouble getting grips because my eyes were burning. And, um, and you know, the time change really got me. Uh, we went from, you know, central to east Co eastern time. It's tough to do. And so, you know, there's all these excuses. It's so easy to make excuses. But when you do that, you let yourself off the hook and you steal your chance to go, okay, where – where did I lose? Because that's a big hole in my game. That prevented me from doing what I wanted to do. I need to fix that. I need to, I need to tighten that up. And so, um, and that's all it was. And it wasn't even that. I wasn't even tightening a hole. I wasn't even focusing on the guard retention. I was focusing on my guard retention seems to work on everybody. And this dude just killed it. What did he do to do that? I need to be doing that. And um, uh, that only comes from going and getting beat up. Um, but it's just, it's so easy for people to, to make these excuses. It's so easy to let it turn into, I got screwed by the ref. I did this, I did that. Um, regardless, you have to go perform, right? Uh, regardless what the situation is. And when you let it be on yourself, you'll always be able to find more holes in your mindset, more holes in your jujitsu. And um, the reason I can say this confidently is because I've done this for years and it's gotten me from a very, very uh, new black belt, uh, a very, very green black belt to uh, one who has won it big adult competition and, um, you know, ha has become a good competitor. And that only came from losing a lot. If I had not competed over those years that it took me, I promise you, I would not have gotten as good at jujitsu. Um, but I think now, uh, we'll just kind of go into our commercial break for this episode. And then when we come back, we're going to look at, uh, the third big idea and the most important big idea of why we train or why we compete in jujitsu. And that is how much fun it is to chase the jujitsu dream and how much fun it is to chase jujitsu competition. And we're going to kind of look at that next. Hey guys, this is Josh McKinney. I just want to interrupt this episode and tell you about the biggest thing I've ever told you about on the podcast. We talked about it last week and it is, I suck at jujitsu pro. Are you sick of sucking at jujitsu? Is the I suck at jujitsu show almost enough? But Josh, there's no video. There's no jujitsu concepts in this. There's no instruction. There's no technique. It's just ideas. It's just it's just strategies. It's just things. This show sucks is what I'm telling you, Josh. I need something more. Look, I hear you. Someone tells me that at least 10 times a day. It's usually my wife. But what I tell my wife now 
is you should subscribe to the I Suck at Jiu Jitsu Show Pro. And the I Suck at Jiu Jitsu Show Pro is only at simplifyingjujitsu.com. And what it is, is we took all of the instructionals that I have ever made, we packaged them for one price. Okay, so if I put them all together, it would turn out to be about $570. And so we thought it made a lot of sense to take that and to give it to you guys for $20. And then each month from now, we thought we would add a new instructional to that. And so that is what the I Suck at Jiu Jitsu Show Pro is. For $20 a month, you will be getting new instructionals, new premium podcasts. And just while we're on the subject, I'll tell you about what we have coming up. On April 1st, we're going to be dropping exclusively on the I Suck at Jiu Jitsu Show Pro, the Trinity of Guard Passing. And this is an instructional that I have been teasing on the podcast for literally three years now. I've been working on it for literally three years now. And now the concepts are detailed enough, they make enough sense, they are simple enough that I'm ready to share it with you guys. And so in this Trinity of Guard Passing, we look at all kinds of different specific technical guard passes, but we really focus on the concepts that make guard passing work. And this is available only for people that subscribe to the ISAC Jiu Jitsu Show Pro. And so if that is interesting to you, if you feel like, you know what, this dude is obviously out of his mind, I better jump on this while I can because, you know, this show is going to be going bye-bye soon. If you feel that way, like we all do, then you should check out the I Suck at Jiu Jitsu Show Pro. It is only at simplifyingjujitsu.com. You can check the link in the description and, uh, and get on. And, um, I guess that also really does support the podcast. And if you love the podcast, we'd love it if you guys support us. Also, five-star review. We'll finish this commercial now. All right, guys, and we are back. And I just want to make sure to apologize that that commercial was terrible. Uh, the one that ChatGPT wrote for me, it was just... It wasn't working, and so I had to just go off the cuff. And so, um, sorry, that one got weird. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's just how life is sometimes. But let's go ahead and talk about kind of our last big idea on why jujitsu competition is awesome and why I think most people would really benefit from doing it. And uh, it is the fun of it all. Um, I would say the fear part of it is not fun. Every other part of the jiu-jitsu competition is pretty darn fun. And then doing it over a long period of time and kind of learning to not only build a mindset, but to kind of build yourself up and to say, okay, I was this guy and I was trying to compete. And two years later, I am almost a totally different person physically. I, my jiu-jitsu is completely different now. My mindset is completely different now. And getting to do that um, for me has been the most fun part uh, about jujitsu competition. I think back, uh, and we were talking about this really early on. First time I competed uh, as a black belt, it was at the Austin Open. And the guy I competed against, he had just, um, he, he was just kind of like getting back into competition. I don't, he was a little bit older, but at a time when I was a white belt, he had won like weight and open class of black belt or adult worlds. And so this was going to be a tough first welcome the black belt match, right? And I did fine, honestly, in the match. I ended up losing. And looking back, um, just looking back on the thoughts that I was having and how I handled the thoughts and where my focus was, um, I just go, man, not only was my jujitsu not near as good, but my mindset was not very good. Uh, and this is, um, you know, when I talk about all the things that I love about jujitsu competition, like I talk about the fear of it and, um, like, oh yeah, you should compete in jiu-jitsu because there's a bunch of fear when you go and do it. Um, and then I talk about, um, you know, I, I, I talk about how, well, if you want to get good, you just go and lose a bunch and get embarrassed. And now I'm telling you guys that the most fun, the best part of the jiu-jitsu competition 
is the suffering that comes before the jujitsu competition. And, uh, and the reason I say that is because you will, there is something one about shared suffering. And if you and your buddies are going to all go and jump in the car and you're going to go compete, it's all suffering. Honestly, I'm going to give you guys the big reveal. Jiu-jitsu competition sucks. It's terrible. It's no fun to do. But for some reason, when you get three of your buddies and you all train really hard and you listen to every episode of the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show, you subscribe to the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show pro, you get a ton of reps in, and then you go and compete. And you drive eight hours to go compete at a tournament where each of you is going to have like two matches. And then you stay in a one-bed Motel 3 at, uh, you know, 20 miles from the venue. And then you have to go compete that next day. Uh, There's no breakfast. It's just a miserable, miserable day. Oh, guess what? All the vending machines are broken. The water's out. The power's out at this venue. Oh, man. And you will leave. And you guys will be like, that was awesome. Do you remember how we we didn't sleep last night because drug dealers were murdering each other in the parking lot? <laughs> that was sweet. You know, do you remember do you remember how um do you remember how Jim broke his leg in half and how we just have it hanging out the window right now uh on our way home? Why is that stuff fun? Jiu-jitsu competition makes no sense. But as somebody who has done a lot of jiu-jitsu competition, it is so much fun to have those experiences. Most of my best jujitsu stories are, are from competition, and most of those stories are bad if you're a fan of Josh McKinney. Uh, most of those stories are negative, you know, like something bad happened. Um, but so often, something bad happening to you can change your perspective and um, it can make you better. I really think about why this podcast really exists. And um, I started it a little before COVID, but it was very much just something I was randomly doing when I felt like it, when I had an idea. Um, And there was no real commitment. And then in COVID, I just, I needed something to take my time. But then I also realized that um, my in-person jujitsu business was closed. And I was like, I've got to have a, I've got to have backup. And uh, it was just something that obviously is something we couldn't have planned for, but it did show me a hole in uh, how I was set up. And so that's why this podcast is where it is. Uh, And it's simply because something bad happened. And again, I guess with a jujitsu competition, all in all, this wasn't, this is not a point that is in my notes. But when I really look at it, a jujitsu competition is just, Paying for something bad to happen and then training really, really hard that so that you're like tough enough to fix it. You know, you're tough enough to make that bad thing not happen. And um, getting to do that over and over again is just absolutely so much fun. And I even look at, um, you know, I've been very honest with you guys about how hard it's been as a new dad and just with. A, a disrespectful son who doesn't sleep uh, to run all the things I run and train as much as I need to train to get back into competing. And the truth was, I really didn't get back into competition shape until after the first time I competed once from coming back from uh, 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 Matthew being born. When that happens, so like I I look, all right, in five weeks, six weeks, like I can do this tournament. I know I can do it. I don't know if it's going to be perfect. I don't know if I'm going to feel exactly the way I should, but I can go compete. I know that uh, there is uh, there is a, a another wolf inside of me that has not been fed, and he wants to compete. He wants some walking around money. He wants to go buy some shoes. And, man, this episode's been wild. If you guys picked up that reference, tag me on Instagram. Um, But (laughs) that was so dumb. Anyway, like I was saying, when I signed up for this competition, I wasn't ready. 
but my training adjusted immediately. I started making time and I also had to feel my way through how I was, or where I was at physically. You know, I was not in great shape and getting back into shape, getting back training was really, really hard, but I did it. And it wasn't even until a couple weeks after the tournament. Uh, but then I finally would go into training and like come out and be like, oh, wow, I'm back. I feel good again. And I not only felt good physically, um, but I also felt good mentally too. My son still didn't sleep, you know, like it's not like things are just, oh, everything's great now. It's just that you feel better in the moment. You feel better in the situation. Um, and I'm telling you guys, I know that this has um, just been a really long sell on probably why you shouldn't compete in jujitsu competitions because it's miserable. But there's something about that misery that is just, it's so fun to share with your friends. And I don't know, it makes you better at jujitsu. And I could be just totally wrong about this part. Um, but getting beat up enough, losing enough, getting embarrassed enough, for some reason, it just makes you a better person. And if you, if you get good at jujitsu, you stop getting beat up enough. You start to get a douchey. I see it happen all the time. It happens to me sometimes. Luckily, you surround yourself with people that can beat you up. And if you don't have people that can beat you up, you go find people and you, you pay to fight them. That is the beauty of jiu-jitsu competition. In my opinion, it's why people should do it. Um, that's all I have for you guys. I know this is a shorter one, but uh, we will go ahead and turn this back over to Josh one more time to close us out on this episode. And that is the episode. Uh, thank you guys for checking this one out. And uh, just want to finish and let you guys know to not forget about the iSucker Jiu Jitsu Show Pro. Uh, this really is, if I'm really being honest, you know, I gave you that kind of funny commercial, but the reason that we're doing this is because. Uh, I hate selling stuff. I really do. I hate having to work so hard on this uh, creative jujitsu product and this project that I really, you know, any of the, the projects that I've made, you guys can always tell that I put thought into it. You know, I really care about doing it. Um, it's my art. And um, the problem is I don't really care about selling. If you go back to a lot of the sales pages on simplifying jujitsu, some of them have parts that are old that are outdated and I just didn't fix because I just don't care about selling. I don't like doing it. And um, this idea of, well, what if you just, you put everything together and all of the products you create, you put there and you don't have to sell anymore. And that really, when somebody suggested that to me, it made so much sense. And so um, the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu, I Suck, oh my gosh, I can't even talk. The I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu Show Pro is it's just one of those things of like when you want to sign up for it, when you want to learn some jujitsu, when you need some inspiration, sign up for it. Um, and I really do think it's something that will help a lot of people even right now before we've added anything new to it because we've put so much effort and so much good stuff into all the instructionals that you get when you sign up right now. Uh, but then don't forget in like two weeks on April 1st, we are gonna be dropping the Trinity of Guard Passing. I'm so excited about that, that we actually took eight months to film. And so uh, we really did put a lot into that one. Um, but the other things to keep in mind, if you guys ever have any topics for the show, or if you ever just want to ask any questions, um, you can always go to simplifyingjujitsu.com slash ask. That is in the description. Um, also in the description, you could get a free copy of The Three Lenses, my newest ebook. Um, you can follow us on our Instagram, um, or if you follow us on YouTube, we just post a lot of short content um, for people who our shorter attention span, which I doubt is you because you're listening to the end of this episode. Um, but then if not, be sure to check out the YouTube channel. Uh, just in general, some of our free content, just our jujitsu instructional content, I think is really good, really helpful for a lot of people who like the type of learning that we do on the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show. And so that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, and most importantly, I hope that today's episode helps you guys suck just a little bit less at jujitsu. Have a great day, guys.